What time is it? It's Packard Books at Dawn. Hat? Check. Shirt? Check. Pants? Optional. Mug? Double check. Check us out at cafepress.com slash packardpokeset where you can get all this great merchandise and more. Do you like Packard Pokeset and want to hear it on demand and on the go? Download the free app today at stitcher.com. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. This is Packard Pokeset and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Pokes at I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic, and this is Season 7, Episode 5. Joining us in the 2018 from the ill that is Illinois is Matt Not a Believer 71 Hello, everybody. And joining me from the far east coast is the Atheist Ranger. Hey, guys. How's it going? One of the big things that's been going on in the United States right now, I mean, as far as pot is concerned, is that California finally decided to jump onto the bandwagon and say, hey, we're going to allow pot in this state for now. It was a long time coming. They had it on the ballot several times out there, as I understand. And finally, in 2018, it became a thing. One of the things is about the nature of the pot industry that was going on out there was the fact is that the industry, as it was underground, it was about $13.8 billion, give or take, but that's the underground. Once it's becoming legal, they're going to make about $5.1-ish billion in legal sales, which I think is kind of interesting. The fact is that they're going to take so much money away from the underground market on this. And there was a number of years ago in this country for about 12, 13 years, we had this thing called prohibition. If you look through your history books, you can find out about it where the temperance movement decided, Hey, nobody in the country can buy alcohol, drink alcohol legally, which made a lot of problems for the country as a whole. And there would be people who had uh, speakeasies and underground places where the beer and the other alcohol was not regulated so you had a lot of problems with it being made wrong or people would get sick on it or worse die from it and after you know 13 years they the country woke up and said hey you know this prohibition stuff it's not for us and i think with marijuana i think it's just taking longer but i think eventually it's going to be the same thing we're going to look back at this as the prohibition of marijuana because you know drugs eventually i think this whole country will eventually have legalized marijuana i'm not going to say it's going to happen tomorrow, but it will happen eventually. Jeff Sessions wants to take that all away. And because the pot industry is going to bring in billions of dollars to these states, a lot of Republicans and Democrats alike, they're going to say, you know, Jeff, you're doing us a real harm. You're taking money out of my pocket. We're going to get rid of you or or something like that. So, I mean, pot in this, in this country, it, it's unregulated. It's a big problem. It should be a regulated narcotic just like tobacco is it is your thoughts i'm not really surprised at all by jeff sessions i mean this is the same guy who not only did he say that no good person smokes marijuana but the fact of the matter is the reason he left the kkk is because they smoked pot yeah i saw that it's like i thought the kkk were some nice people until i found out they smoked pot almost a direct quote actually yeah that was to me hysterical once again this is not more than jeff sessions once again you see the hypocrisy of the people on the right these are the same people that claimed you know states rights states rights you know before the uh gay marriage ruling and once again when it comes to something they don't like all of a sudden they want the uh federal government to crack down on them even though there's a political party that claims they want a limited government yeah i always find that so hilarious with the republicans they will always say small government except for when it comes to certain issues issues then we want big government you know i'm not going to name them all because it's just going to take us down to a rabbit hole that i just don't want to go down right now but you're right they're trying to implement big government when they keep claiming small government matt your thoughts i agree that it needs to be regulated but i mean if it's going to bring in a lot of tax dollars for the states i think it's you know in that aspect it's a good idea because they claim that for medicinal purposes it's good to help cancer patients Mm -hmm. and uh other medical problems that people have so i'm kind of for it in that way Mm -hmm. not as recreational that can kind of get out of hand i think I, i would tend to sort of agree with you on that i mean if you look at it like this when i was mentioned about the alcohol 
earlier that with alcohol, if you use it for recreational purposes, I mean, it, it's fine. I mean, it's when you go out and you drive or do something else after the right, fact. Right, right. Yeah, behind the wheel of a car and kill somebody or severely injure someone, you know, no, that's, I mean, it's the same thing with pot. I mean, if you smoke too much of it, yeah, it's going to screw you up and you get behind the wheel of a car, you know, you're going to be you know under the influence. Then you extend those laws. If you're going to be smoking pot, then you don't go out and drive. I would argue that if you're smoking pot, you're generally not out driving anyway, because you're like, I just want to sit on my couch and just eat all day. <laughs> Munchies. Munchies. You got the munchies. I, I'll be honest with you. I drove high once, man. I will never do that again. I've never been high. So, I mean, the closest thing I get high is if I step on a stepladder and that is like, whoa, that's too high for me. <laughs> I, I've uh, I've been high, but not on marijuana. Did you want to continue with that story? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, yeah, LSD actually. Wow, really? Yes. Did, did you watch a chair turn to a thousand snakes or something? I mean, just, you know. No, uh, in fact, I think I've told this story before. The first time I ever tried it, I was high for like three hours, and for two of those hours, I was afraid of the television, and it wasn't even <laughs> on. I tried acid once. I I started seeing a lot of elephants chasing me. <laughs> I would, but I can't get it out of the battery. You know, it's just you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> So. Uh, the things we used to do when we were younger. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to admit something right now. When I was younger, a friend of mine and I, we didn't smoke anything, you know, illegal. We actually smoked hay. You can smoke hay. And it's like, you can't get really high off of it. But I mean, you're just like, oh, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> that's that's as close as to smoking anything plant grown I've ever done. Well, we gave our friend of ours uh, catnip. He, he was thinking it was marijuana, so we smoked it. <laughs> Did he get high from it? Well, he, he was kind of like dumb as a box of rocks. So, Oh, so he pretended he was high. He couldn't figure out why his cats were hanging around him. <laughs> cats would, got high, but, uh, you know. Well, look at my cats are all over me, man. There was a number of years ago. I used to live in this other county in the state where I live in. It was near this one correctional facility. It was the county jail. And apparently they were burning all this weed and whatnot. And the wind drifted it right into the prison cells. The prisoners like opening their window and they're getting high from the fumes from the pot that they were trying to destroy. You know, the illegal pot they were trying to destroy. So right. <laughs> it was incredibly funny. <laughs> How come all the inmates are so mellow? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> uh, we had a comment from uh, Practical Magic 9. Thank you for your comment. She says, Hubby just told me tonight that friends used to smoke burlap. I didn't know that was a thing. Neither did I. Yeah. It's just, you know, things you do when you're younger. That I mean, I got to tell you, smoking hay has a, its own unique flavor. I got to tell you. So, <laughs> it's not something I would recommend doing because I, I don't know the long-term benefits or harms from that. But I mean, it, it was not like we grabbed a whole bale and started and smoked down the whole bale, just like a few pieces here and there. So I just throw a match on and watch it go poof. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it too. That's not what we did. So we, we, we weren't trying to, you know, be arsonists. So. <laughs> fire, fire. <laughs> We've saw it on this show multiple times that when people go out to pray that you know what you're doing, you're not doing anything but, you know, mental masturbation, as it were, because it doesn't do anything. But this pastor in Indiana on Brooksville Road Community Church seems to think that prayers are being answered. And he has proof. Not. <laughs> Not even really. He's actually quite confused. They put up a poster board in their church that says, hey, if you pray for a thing and that thing comes true, write it down. Well, the problem is this is all self-reporting for one. And two, this thing that they prayed for and had happen are the most mundane things that you could ever establish. Things like I prayed for a job and I got a job. Okay, did you go looking for a job? Well, yeah. Well, then that's how you got your job. They didn't come knocking at your door three o'clock in the morning and you didn't put a resume in anywhere. It just said, hey, we need to hire you right now because God told us that you're the person for the job. That never happens. Or they say, well, I got my cancer cured. Did you go to the doctor's treatment? Well, yeah. God didn't give you a cure. The doctors did all that stuff. Come on. Really, people? Grow up. These things don't happen because God is looking out for you. These are just things that are everyday mundane things. 
things. Someone had posted something online just recently, and I said, you know how some people will say, I prayed to find my car keys, and God found them. You know what? I told God, I said, you know what? If you don't find my car keys right now, I'm going to beat the nonsense out of you. And sure enough, I found my keys. So either God is a wuss, or it doesn't exist. If they strange your thoughts. Just, wow. <laughs> <laughs> You just wonder why we don't take prayer seriously. This is why, because you wish for the most mundane things, okay? Especially yeah. when there's alternative explanations. And honestly, one of the things I can't stand is when cancer patients, let me be very clear, I'm glad that their cancer went into remission. But then afterwards, they thank God. I'm sorry. I don't recall God being there when, uh, you know, your doctor was helping you with that. So stop, uh, you know, thinking uh, your imaginary sky daddy and start actually thinking the people that, you know, actually was with you during that little adventure, which would be your doctors. Yeah. Exactly. And the thing is, if you go to the doctor and something medically goes wrong, they blame the doctor. They never blame God. But if something goes right, hey, doctor, what what did you do? You, I, I remember you being there sort of, but it was actually God doing everything. Oh, come on. Matt, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think it's total BS. They think that uh, God answers their prayers and it wasn't God they answered their prayers. Yeah. One of the things here is that they said that they wrote down that they caught on the news because they had the cameras there and they... A, they were able to, you know, see a couple of them, not really close, but close enough. One was like, I had a healthy baby and a safe delivery. Yeah, that happens millions of times every day. Mm -hmm. That's not a miracle. Or, for example, another one was, mom got to go to Indiana. Well, someone had to pay for the plane ticket or the travel tickets or the gas to get out there. So, yeah, that's not God either. I mean, that's just people helping everybody else. Or they said, hey, you know what? This person here needs to go there for for reasons and we have the extra cash so yeah we'll help out yeah you know i i prayed that my cereal would taste like chocolate okay well did, did you have cocoa pebbles well, of course well that's why it tastes like chocolate <laughs> <laughs> If I have Fruit Loops in the morning and I say I want them to taste like coffee or a steak, and if it tastes like steak, well, then that's a different story. But that's, it, it always tastes like Fruit Loops to me. Yeah, I don't think that ever changes. No, that's because we live in reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, anyway. when my mom had cancer a few years back, you know, I don't know if she prayed or not, but uh, I mean, her cancer's in remission, but it uh, wasn't God that did it. I know yeah. that. So the thing is here, though, this pastor, Chris Sorensen, I, I may have forgot to mention his name but he has on the board there is on the top of the board it says all of those are miracles that are we attribute to our heavenly father it should read correlation does not imply causation that's what it should actually say on that board because you wanted a thing and you just happen to get that thing doesn't necessarily mean that a god did it you have to first prove that there's a god out there and secondly you have to prove that it actually did anything or had any correlation to it and what is the mechanism it used to make that happen because if you go well god made it happen how i don't know magic there's no getting around that no there isn't while we are poking at your news you can poke us at facebook and twitter or poke us with an email at ppapodcast at gmail.com or leave us a message at 662-709-PPAP Join us live on YouTube slash Packard Pokeset on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time. Be part of the conversation by live chatting with us during the show. Enjoy the show? Help support us by becoming a monthly patron at patreon.com slash Packard Pokeset. Or look awesome by buying something at cafepress.com slash Packard Pokeset. No money? No problem. You can help us by sharing the show with friends and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher. For everyone that shares and rates us, you kick ass. The Atheists. The Bible. And No Wardrobe, the podcast. Wait a minute. No wardrobe? You mean we're going to be naked while we do this? Well, seeing how I'm an atheist and I'm reading the Bible and since clothes are flammable. Fire! 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 I thought it might be a good idea to take them all off first. <laughs> Naked or not, follow along as we read, analyze, and try to keep you from falling asleep as we go through this boring-ass book. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Who knows? We may even be on YouTube someday.
And be sure to check out our secondary podcast, The Atheist, The Bible, and No Wardrobe. Wait, just wait. The worst is yet to come. Does it ever end? It, it will end eventually. Not yet, but it will end eventually. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like it's been going on for months and months and months. I know, right? The, the The fact that it was written so long ago and people still believe this. In fact, if you listen to this episode and you don't realize by now that the whole thing is a scam and built around a scam, I have no hope for you. I really don't because this part of the book that we read kind of really put a pin right into that chapter of the whole Bible. It says, hey, this is a scam that we developed. And the fact is that these people didn't see that at that time just blows my mind. It just blows my mind you're living in a world of make-believe with flowers and bells and leprechauns and magic frogs with funny little hats the exiting of al franken from the senate seat in minnesota the reason why he had to leave is kind of disheartening i mean to have a photograph of something you know you thought it was a joke which really wasn't all that funny and then somebody else coming out and saying hey you did this thing and you grabbed me or whatnot and you have to resign basically in disgrace that's not a good thing it really is a kind of a crap thing i mean overall the guy did a lot of good but i don't stand behind him for the crappy stuff that he did the thing is now we have a seat that's open sort of open the lieutenant governor over in minnesota is taking over the reason why we're talking about that is because crazy eyes michelle bachman has decided that she wants to try to run for al franken's senate seat but only if god sends her a sign which is christianese for i'm planning on running for the senate seat she is such a weird woman she told this to televangelist jim baker that she's considering running for the seat and of course she's just waiting for the sign from god she goes i trust in a big god as a opposed to which gods i mean you are you believe that there's more than one a big god versus a small god i mean did you like pull down his pants and see well he's got a big god i mean wh where are you getting this from she then said was supposed to run for president in 2012 in order to make the repeal for obamacare the central issue for the republican platform i feel like i was wildly successful i didn't win but i did move the debate how could you have lost and then moved the debate this debate was going on before you even stepped into the ring you're making claims Claims for things that you have no claims to make for. She continues here. So I didn't shed a tear when I left the contest because I felt like, you know, I fulfilled the calling that God gave me. You left the contest two or three days after you were kicked out of it because you lost the first session. Honestly, I hope she does run because the lieutenant governor is not planning on giving up that seat. She's going to run for Senate on the ballot. And the way the Minnesotans run over there right now, I think that she's going to have her ass handed to her again matt your thoughts <laughs> well the, this woman i don't know i was just reading the story here and when you had mentioned big god i started laughing yeah she's gonna get her butt handed to her i mm -hmm. think most likely because i think uh, people in minnesota are gonna vote for somebody republican yeah trump has made being a republican in this day and age right now i mean a lot of them are coming out and just being really obnoxious and because of that i think that for the most part i think that the republican party is going to have their asses handed to them in 2018 atheist ranger your thoughts uh just going off what you were saying this is i don't think it's just a trump thing i mean the fact of the matter is the republican party is 100 percent corrupt and they've made it more obvious okay this is i mean they recently just passed a tax bill where i think what 83 to 85 percent of the benefits go to the top one percent i mean this is a political party that cares more about pleasing their big donors than they do with their actual constituents yeah i mean at, at least with democrats even though they're I would say the Democratic Party is maybe like 60% corrupt, but I mean, at least things are better under Democrats. Yeah, I would say so. One of the things is that Rubio, I think he's a senator out in, in New York, after he signed onto the bill to say, hey, let's give the richest people even more money, then he comes out, oh, you know what? That was probably not a good idea. But you signed the bill. All your words are just dust, as they say. You know, it, it means nothing. And why Crazy Eyes is planning on running for Senate seat? It just makes no sense. Of course, she believes in imaginary sky wizards. So, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know that much about Minnesota. Um, I don't. In fact, I don't even know if it's even a blue or red state, to be honest. But what I do know is that I'm hoping the people that live in that state have enough sense not to uh, vote in yet another Christian fundy to 
the Senate because that's the last thing we need in there. I completely agree with you there. We definitely don't need another Christian Fundy, especially her. She is just really weird. I mean, this is just some of the, the kind of weird stuff that she's done. She thinks that every archaeological find confirms the truth of the Bible. So every time we find dinosaur bones or a body somewhere that was from millions of years ago or thousands of years ago, whatever, you know, whatever it happens to be. I mean, the dinosaur bones, millions. If they dig up a person thousands of years ago or, or whatever, they think it confirms the truth of the Bible. She thinks that Donald Trump is a man of prayer who hasn't taken a day off since he's getting into office. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Did, did you miss all those pictures of him golfing? Yeah, I guess so. And she also said that 9-11 was uh, God's judgment on America. No, terrorists were behind that one. Hello. And the big one? No, this one really blows my mind with religious people. They think that liberals are hastening the arrival of the Antichrist. Okay, let's put that in perspective. They think if the Antichrist comes, then Jeebus is coming back to wash away all the people who don't believe or kill them or whatever. They kind of masturbate over going, yeah, we want this to happen. Oh my God, you're going to make this happen. Do you want it to happen or you don't want it to happen? Make up your mind. Well, I mean, th this is why she's even going to do a bad job because I don't remember the exact thing she said, but I know that when the gay marriage ruling came down, how many times did she say, well, that God's law uh, supersedes man's law? Okay, well, guess what? Man's law is, at least in this country, is the Constitution. So she doesn't even believe in that, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, you're right. She thinks that God's law comes first, which is really the laws of ancient goat herders. Yes. And they are men. She just blows my mind. It's the Onion Radio News. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. You know, I don't know where you live in the country. I mean, at least here in my state, there used to be a thing called full service gas stations. I mean, in a few places, if the city is big enough and the, the company wants to do it, they have full service gas stations out in Oregon and in New Jersey. And I, I'm not sure if those are the only two places off the top of my head, but they were the only places where if you drove up to a pump, you got full service, whether you wanted it or not, you paid the extra money to have the full service because they didn't want you touching the gas pumps for whatever reason, because I don't know. They think that maybe you're going to blow up if you touch the pumps, I guess. Well, out in Oregon, they decided to do away with all the pumps where you have to get full service all the time. And the people in Oregon are not happy. They're saying some really weird things out there. I don't even know how to pump gas. I am 62, native Oregon. I say no thanks. I don't want to smell like gasoline. Are you taking the gasoline and spraying yourself with it? You just not figure out where to put the pump? I mean, you're 62 years old. It, it's not any different than and handling the penis really it's just a big long smelly one another one was here i've lived in this state all my life and i refuse to pump my own gas this is a service only qualified people should perform i will literally park at the pump and wait until someone pumps my gas you know what that would do here in Wisconsin? If I pulled up to the pump until somebody pumped my gas, I'd be there a very long time. Or I would run out of gas waiting for somebody else to come out and pump my gas. Or the possibility someone would go, hey, you got a problem? There are instances if you're handicapped or something like that, then yeah, they will still do that. But get over it, people. You don't need to be qualified to pump gas. Anybody can do it. I can't speak for every state. Here in Wisconsin, you have to be a licensed driver and you have to be over the age of 18 to pump gas. That's your qualifications. You don't have to go to school for it. You don't have to have a degree in it. You don't even have to have any medical knowledge or any other special knowledge. Follow me here. I know it sounds complicated, but follow me here. You open up the gas cap to your car. You know, like the little door that's on the side of the car. Yeah, there's a little door there. Pull the gas cap off. You have to turn it, take it off, take the pump handle, and it's going to be pointy. Put it inside your gas tank where the opening is. Pull the handle after you've chosen what fuel do you want, and then pump. And then the pump will shut off. Oh my God, I just gave you a training. If you need a training course, I'll sell it to you for $9.99. Atheist Ranger, your thoughts? Well, I don't pump gas that often because I don't have a car at the moment, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the times I've had to pump gas, really not that hard. Don't see why you need even help doing it. But again, people are stupid. And unfortunately, in America, we help keep stupid people alive. Yeah. No offense. Matt, your thoughts? Well, as the Forrest Gump said, stupid is what stupid does. 
Yeah. I used to pump gas for a living you know, in high school. Mm-hmm. I worked at a full service gas station, but they're not even around anymore, these uh, full service gas stations. But I know, at least here in Illinois, they got a sticker on the pump. Like if you're handicapped or you're, you can't pump gas, call this number and somebody will come out and pump the gas for you. Yeah. But for the people that are able bodied, pump your own gas. Yeah. It's not hard. No, yeah, exactly. It's not that hard. We had a comment from the chat room from uh, Connie Practical Magic 9. Thank you for your comment. She goes, Hello, our, we are paying to pump our own gas bag our groceries i go to the grocery store i don't have to pay extra to have someone bag my groceries or i go through the, the self-checkout i bag my own groceries I, on my way you know it doesn't cost me any extra so you know that there's that but i mean i don't have to have a specialized degree in bagging groceries either i can still do it just like anybody else can for the past three weeks here in vermont it's been below weather and i'm sorry but if i can pump gas and negative 15 winter then these people can do it living wherever they're at i want to read a couple more of these comments here because they are so so bizarre this one comment says many people are not capable of knowing how to pump gas and the hazards of not doing it correctly i can't even imagine all right now it continues here besides i don't want to go to work smelling of gas when i get on my hands or clothes i feel very i agree very bad idea Again, you're not taking the, the gas handle out and spraying yourself with the gasoline. And if you get gasoline on your hands, you wash your hands. This is something you're taught when you're a kid. When you get something smelling in your hands, you wash your hands. It's not real hard. And the last one here, it's just so bizarre. Yuck. Pumping my own fuel in freezing temperatures and handling a nasty old fuel nozzle that 50 other people have touched that day. And who knows what cooties are on there. Actual quote. No, thank you. It's nice not to have to pump your own fuel. I'm going to name the show right now. Gas cooties. I don't know. There we go. (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) Really? Really, people? Again, I don't know who said that quote, but again, just in fact, just yesterday, it was a negative 18 and I pumped gas. You know, I, I paid, of course, my sister drove me somewhere. But again, I, I went out and I pumped the gas in negative 18 degree weather. If I can do that, you can do it in, you know, five degree weather, wherever this place is at. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we had a quick comment from the chat room uh, from the real Paul Marshall. Thank you for your comment. He says, if you put the gas cooties in the tank, you get better mileage. <laughs> Remember, boys and girls, if you're out pumping your own gas, make sure you put the gas cooties in the gas tank when you're pumping. I, I fill up my car with gas, and it really runs re- very well for some reason. Yeah, it, it, it's all those gas cooties. I guess so. Yeah. Can't believe it. Don't believe it. And for today's unbelievable deity, we are going to be talking about Picus. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's the the Roman god of agriculture. And it's also the woodpecker of wisdom. Picus is the son of Saturnalius, since we just had Saturnalius last month, to start off with a perfectly normal run-of-the-mill demigod. He became the first king of Latinum and was famous for delivering oracles by tapping on a piece of wood. This made him very popular with his subjects. Advice on tap. His fame spread Circe, the Greek enchantress, decided that she kind of fancied him but he was engaged to canis and spurred her advances rejecting a witch's passion usually leads to trouble and they are a melting pot of wild emotions and tend to explode when love doesn't go their way so seriously was so furious she lashed out with a spell and picus was changed into a woodpecker you kind of saw that one coming i hope this made the peasants like him even more though now who doesn't like a woodpecker now picus flew off and became an agricultural deity specializing in the fertility of crops hence the expression keep your pecker up i have to say i have never heard that expression before some say he's even a connection with the fertilizer god of sterilicus but he's never at a loss of pronostication powers and still taps out his wise messages even to this day now the deity in the pecking order of picus is also reputed to be the father of frolicking woodland celebrity fatus we can only presume that this event happened before his woodpecker transformation if this range your thoughts yeah the only saying i've heard involving the word pecker is not to touch other boys <laughs> but uh yeah <laughs> I'm not much of a farmer, so everybody can't comment much on this. But I mean, if you're going to change someone, any witches out there by chance, if you're going to change uh, someone who's going to spurn your advances, change them into something ugly or useless. <laughs> there you go. Like a condom. It's useless. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a couple comments from the chat room. I'm going to read those before we go into Matt here. We had one from Godless Geezer. Thank you for your comment. He says, I think Trump has a woodpecker. Okay. <laughs> and a comment here from Practical Magic 9. She says, I frolicked once. Highly overrated. (laughs) 
And then uh, another comment here from the real Paul Marshall. Thank you for your comment. He says, I think Trump has a button instead of a, you know, never mind. Uh, <laughs> Matt, your thoughts? A woodpecker on Viagra? Doing. Well, you said keep your pecker up. So, you know, uh, I thought... that just makes their beak instead of being pointy go up. You know, makes it gives it a curve. Never mind. I know. I know. <laughs> but when you said keep, well, but it said it in the, the story, keep your pecker up. Yeah. You know, people use that as a term like, okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, weird. The funny thing is that when we come across things in nature that we couldn't explain at one time, why is this animal doing this thing? I don't know. So we make up a story to go with it. And this is a funny story to go about why woodpeckers exist. So why not? Yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's just weird. <laughs> It is. I mean, I never really followed this stuff, so yeah, it's not one of the weirder stories we've ever covered. But I mean, it's it's pretty. Uh, weird. It, it's pretty weird. Yeah. You, know, it's, yeah. you look at this and it's like, okay. <laughs> Most likely because of this was over in Rome and Europe and whatnot. There was a particular woodpecker that they came across that they were trying to explain. So, but uh, anyway, that's Picus, another deity you don't have to believe in. All right. Well, we got to get out of here. We'll be back for our midweek show in a couple weeks. So expect that but we'll be back here next friday at 9 p.m central time so until then this has been packard pokes that we just poke it news and that's a wrap